$1.7 million, fitting around 90 Ukrainians with new prosthetic devices. Most of them soldiers, but also children who lost limbs to Russian rockets. I will say that one thing to work with adult soldiers and another thing when we are working with kids, and it's very upsetting to see, but that gives us more drive. After a well-deserved lunch break, it's time for some soldiers to try their brand new prosthetics and for the first time in months to comfortably walk again. He's like, I want it also. <laughs> I want to walk like that. For the next three weeks, Gradinar and his staff will make constant adjustments to the soldiers' new soldiers will train hard to build strength and stability. Once back in Ukraine, they'll have access to a new satellite prothes clinic. Here in the US, Gradinor and his family will inevitably miss them. You meet strangers at airport and in each week it, they become like your brothers. But soon enough, another group might arrive. As Gradinor puts it, until Vladimir Putin decides to stop killing and injuring Ukrainians, he, his family and everyone at the foundation will be ready to take in more amputees and help them heal. Ben Chamiso, Scripps News, Oakdale, Minnesota. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Matt Elwell. Right now, 526, a nice, uh, comfortable morning for most areas. Coolest temperatures out toward West Yellowstone sitting into the 30s. Most of us very close to the 50 degree mark, if not at the 50 degree mark as we're starting the morning. Uh, very light winds expected today. Lots of sunshine and warmer temperatures. It looks like today's going to top out right at the lower 80s in the Bozeman area. Butte, a few degrees cooler, but still very comfortable into the upper 70s. Mostly sunny skies. I don't see any great rain chances in our forecast for today. Uh, does look like we see that potential again uh, developing tomorrow afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock today. Hardly a cloud to be seen on our uh, future cast as it stands now. Tomorrow afternoon, spotty showers developing. These could uh, bring us some intense, brief um, downpours uh, through the late afternoon, early part of the evening. But uh, overall, uh, tomorrow's going to be another pleasant day. I think our temperatures are warming up a little bit. Uh, uh, and that will make things a little bit um, more active for rain showers. Bright and sunny and outdoorable day today. Enjoy the afternoon. I think we have a couple of warm days ahead of us. Bozeman, Butte and Dillon all near the 80 degree mark for today. Uh, comfortable uh, for today and tomorrow. Tomorrow again, uh, isolated chances, some thunder showers, another hot one. Uh, I can go to hot. At, 85 and above, I guess. I don't know that that's that's an unwritten rule. <laughs> well, when I when it's like 60, I'm like, it's hot outside. Uh, right. That's just uh, me, though. It's all relative. <laughs> exactly. But it sounds like great weather. I'm really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, me too. All right. Time to start the next half hour of Montana this morning. But when we come back, more of your headlines and another look at that forecast for you when we come back. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Haven has opened up a new shelter in Bozeman. I'm Kristen Merkel and I'll tell you what this nonprofit is doing to provide better resources for domestic violence survivors. And the commercial space race takes to new heights. We'll delve into the first commercial flight to space at 537. All right, focusing right now on the ground, 530 on this Friday. A nice little look. I'm We're looking towards city. space. How's that? <laughs> yeah, uh, from go. space, more <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, we are looking at comfortable conditions. You can see how clear things mm -hmm. are in the mining city this morning. Maybe a few areas with a little patchy fog, some okay. of those low-lying areas, but really not a big issue. Uh, morning temperatures all sitting near the 50-degree mark, 54 in Whitehall. 36, though, in West Yellowstone, so there are a couple of outliers. Uh, temperatures are going to be warm this afternoon, at least warmer than they have been, topping out around 80 degrees today in Bozeman. We'll be close to that in Butte. 
lots of sunshine. We do have some rain chances to talk about this weekend. Uh, I'll break that down, take a look toward the 4th of July, give you an idea of what to expect. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. 531, our top story this half hour. A new shelter is now open in Bozeman for the nonprofit Haven. It'll help to better support domestic violence survivors. And MTN's Kristen Merkel reports on what exactly that means. I'm here in front of Haven's new shelter that is providing more resources than ever before to survivors of domestic violence in Gallatin County. Hi, I'm Kristen Merkel and I'm with KBZK. I have an appointment. Thank you. I see you on our pre-approved list and I'll let you in. We're so excited to be in the Barnard Center. It's our new shelter and community resource center. Haven is a nonprofit serving survivors of assault, sex trafficking, and stalking in Gallatin County. Haven's executive director, Erica Coyle, says this new shelter is because of community support. This has been an absolute labor of love. We had over 400 community members contribute to the project and really make it come to life and make it happen. This is our administrative wing. This new shelter will allow for the nonprofit to serve quadruple the number of survivors that they used to. The maximum capacity of our new shelter is 40 people. We're also for the first time ever able to invite pets in. As well as providing more of a sense of community. For the first time ever in Haven's history, we have a dedicated space in which the community can come in and actually engage in our mission. But we are anticipating that later in the year, we are going to have things like yoga classes and workshops. And we know that part of the healing process is really building community. So we wanted to have a space that could make that happen. For Coyle, a new shelter like this means the world to her and present and previous survivors. I think that one of the big pieces for me is working with survivors who maybe stayed with us back at our old shelter a few years ago. Some of them have come here and seen the new space and just expressed to us how seen they feel by our community. If you or someone you know is seeking assistance from Haven, you can reach them through the link on our website. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. Such an important topic. Thank you very much for bringing that to us, Kristen. Now, as we near the end of Pride Month, we're taking a closer look at some of the growing backlash many LGBTQ plus families in this country are facing. Scripps News National Correspondent Chris Conte shows us how many same-sex couples are helping their kids navigate some of that political rhetoric targeting the gay community. As LGBTQ issues are once again thrust back into the national political spotlight, same-sex couples across this country with children are having to navigate some new and intense rhetoric. A changing of the seasons brings with it a new opportunity for growth, both outside the home of Sean Weber and his partner Danielle Higgins and inside of it. We're also from very two different backgrounds. Yeah. so. He grew up on a dairy farm. These two have been together for the better part of 17 years. They call rural Maine home. Growing up in small towns, they both had very different experiences coming out. I told my parents at the house and then my dad kicked me out. I never had to officially come out per se because I always thought this is my life and this is who I am. They are now a family of six. Uh, this is Emily. With two kids out of college and two teenagers at home. The struggles of everyday parenthood are plenty. We are faced with a lot. We really are faced with a lot, um, especially with the pandemic. But as members of the LGBTQ community, Sean and Daniel also have to navigate the complexities of being gay while raising kids at a time when nationwide there are numerous anti-LGBTQ pieces of legislation making the rounds. So they do their best to help their kids understand things. Well, that's one of the things that we've always told our kids. Be who you are. Doesn't matter who. Just be yourself. That's all. Sean and Daniel, though, are not despondent about the future for themselves or their kids. Quite the opposite. We're on that other end of the LGBTQ spectrum where we're 
we see a lot of positive stuff of how we're treated, how we're respected, um, how we're included. Their town of less than 3,000 bucks, the kind of stereotypes most people might have when it comes to acceptance of the gay community. It's showing that that acceptance is, is expanding more and more every day, which is very good. From experience, these two men know that like any other family, they will continue to face ups and downs. How do we work with our kids to understand, have them understand that, you know, something that traumatic taking us back how are we going to bring them forward? But even amidst some less than welcoming political rhetoric right now, they, like parents everywhere, are hopeful their kids grow up seeing the beauty of the world around them. I feel relief in a way that they're coming up through and they're going to be putting a lot of that stuff to rest for us. In Orrington, Maine, I'm Chris Condi. Now this next story is historical and what I find personally really interesting, Virgin Galactic joined the commercial space race with its first flight carrying paying customers. Donya Backus reports on the launch and on their mission. Three, two, one, release, release, release. This is the moment when Virgin Galactic's rocket powered plane released from the mothership in the latest leap for humankind. Ignition, good control. Rather than a vertical launch, a twin fuselage jet lifted the Unity space plane from the New Mexico runway and carried it to an altitude over 45,000 feet before releasing it to fly on its own. A built-in motor then propelled the ship to an altitude higher than 50 miles from Earth. Our mission specialists have been cleared to unstrap and enjoy the zero-G experience. Along with the two pilots and an astronaut trainer were the paying customers, three Italian researchers who spoke after the flight. We did uh, every, all the experiments that we were supposed to, to run and uh, we also had the opportunity to look outside and uh, really enjoy the beauty of the view outside. Virgin Galactic has said it plans to charge $450,000 per seat for out-of-this-world tourism. Up to four passengers can be anything from you know, space tourists to researchers, uh, university uh, endeavors, things like that. Uh, so, so really it's a matter of making money. After the 72 minute total flight, the VSS Unity space plane came back to Earth. And there's Will stop. <laughs> now joining Blue Origins and SpaceX, Virgin plans to offer monthly flights and already has hundreds of ticket holders waiting for their moment in space. Don Ubacus, CBS News. Los Angeles. Now, during the mission, the crew performed microgravity uh, experiments during their few minutes of weightlessness. The Italian government sponsored the flight, but there's no word on how much it paid. Really interesting stuff, I Yeah, think. it really is. Yeah. It's cool. I think so. Do you know what else is kind of cool? What's that? Keeping cool during the summer. Yeah, that's sometimes tougher than now than the others. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's the pool, there's water balloon fights. Well, a little rock police officer, well, he might not have a great edge on the slip and slide, but you know, he was able to keep cool. Look at this. Oh. Okay, well, awesome. but you got some neighborhood kids. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> spray him down, cool. make sure he's nice and cool. Get the ultimate experience. Now this is over in Arkansas. I mean, triple digits. Yeah, they're, no, they're seeing triple digits uh, the next few days as well. And so Just like so many parts of the country, Matt, it's really interesting. You know, as a meteorologist, what, what do you make of that? I mean, those are really hot temps. Yeah, they are hot with. temperatures, and uh, while it's not unprecedented, mm -hmm. the amount of people affected is. So yeah, absolutely. Amazing. But he found a way to stay cool, <laughs> he and they had some fun. He found a way to have some fun and stay cool in the process. So I love the, I love the uh, community connection. There. I do, too. I just think it's so, so fun. Thank you so much for it's getting good. that on camera. Yeah. Awesome to share it. All right, quick break here on Montana this morning. But when we come back in the locker room, Bozeman Hawks receives a coveted statewide award. And we hear from a Belgrade native who went from being an athlete to being a business owner. But before we get into that, encouraging news on the economy helped stocks make solid gains on Wall Street on Thursday. The Dow surged 269 points. The Nasdaq was unchanged and the S&P 500 gained 19 points. We'll have more of your CBS News in your Money Watch report when Montana This Morning returns. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning.
L.A. expects more than 50 million people to travel during the long holiday weekend, and most will go by car. The group says drivers are in for a treat, lower gasoline prices across most of the country. The national average for a gallon of gas fell four cents since last week to $3.54. The number of holiday flyers is expected to see sharp gains compared to last year, but the rush comes as airlines recover from a series of storms that delayed tens of thousands of flights and forced the cancellation of several thousand more since last weekend. United Airlines has been hard hit, canceling about 14 percent of its flights on Thursday. And mailing a letter is about to cost more. The price of a first-class U.S. stamp will rise by $0.03 cents to $0.66 cents on July 9th. The Postal Service announced the move in April, making this the third first-class stamp price increase since 2019. The money-losing federal agency is on a 10-year plan aimed at becoming profitable. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. I think I'm on a similar 10-year plan to become profitable eventually. Yeah, one of these days we'll, we'll make it, Matt. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> right now, current time coming up on 644 Community Hospital of Anaconda ICAM. Clear skies, comfortable conditions for your Friday morning. 40, uh, 48 degrees, our temperature right now. You look into Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport off the ICAM there, 49. It's bright, clear, sunny uh, for the afternoon today. We're not going to see much of a shift in our weather pattern overall uh, for uh, the next couple of days. Our temperatures are going to continue to rise. The big change is uh, today we've got clear skies, outdoorable. Finally, looking at 80 degree temperatures with light winds and no clouds. But tomorrow, a good chance of some pop-up showers or thunderstorms trying to fire off into the afternoon, which could dampen the afternoon a uh, little, but they are going to be spotty, just more intense downpours. High pressure clearing the way for today. Uh, tomorrow we do have a very weak uh, mid-level impulse moving through. To break that down, that just means we've got some uh, uh, ability for thunderstorms to form tomorrow afternoon. Today we're talking clear skies through the afternoon, uh, not really looking at any significant rain chances today. Tomorrow it becomes more apparent that we see these pop-up showers. Uh, this I stopped this around three o'clock. You see they're just very spotty but intense uh, storms forecasted through future cast and uh, looking at it uh, looks like it's going to pass through here pretty quickly as you head into the evening. The temperatures upper 70s low 80s for most of the area light wind very comfortable conditions for today. Tonight, likely to be dealing with moonlit uh, conditions. A nice quiet evening. Uh, daytime highs dropping pretty quickly down into the 50s with the clear skies. And then as you look at the extended forecast, uh, not bad. Uh, Saturday, we do have that chance of showers and thunderstorms. Monday night into Tuesday morning, a good chance of some thunder showers. Uh, trying to move through, but I think Tuesday evening, uh, really not much of a uh, threat for severe weather or any type of uh, real significant shower or thunderstorm chances is mainly confined to the mornings. And then as you look out uh, past that, temperatures are going to moderate a little bit. We are cooling down uh, for the 4th of July and then warming right back up by the end of the week. I'll talk more about your school day forecast, or no, I won't. <laughs> I'm stuck in that. Back uh, in session. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about your forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Well, focusing on high school for a moment, one standout hawk received a final accolade yesterday morning to cap off his Bozeman High School career before he heads to the next level. Weston Brown won the Montana Gatorade Player of the Year for track and field. The distance runner won both the 1600 and 3200 meter race at state, and he placed second in the 800. He won the boys two mile at the Nike Outdoor National in Portland, Oregon with a time of 8 minutes and 53.02 seconds. He runs two miles faster than most people run 
one mile. He'll head to Princeton next year to continue his academic and his running career. Of course, we wish him the very best. And as a senior in high school, Jerem J uh, Rogers faced a curveball of getting cut from the basketball team as an upperclassman, despite having the skills and the drive to play at the highest level. His mental health suffered like never before as a result, but he soon channeled that energy and he once put into sports into creating a clothing brand centered on bettering the mental health of athletes. MTN's Grace Lawrence talked with him this week about his brand, Protect Your Peace. For me to like lose basketball because like I was like, who is Jerem Rogers if he doesn't have basketball in his life? And so it took me a while, but like then I was like, yo, I can channel all my energy I was putting into sports into something like have more of an impact. And that's where like, the clothing brand aspect came to it. My goal, I'm not trying to sell clothes. I'm like selling a message, you know, I'm like spreading a message. Like when people think about Jerem Rogers, I want, I want them to think about like protect your peace, like mental health. I want them to think about like the positives. Why protect your peace? How'd you get that message? My whole life I was trying to make coaches happy. I was trying to like make my parents happy. Like I was just trying to make everyone else happy besides myself. And so when I got cut and basketball was like taken away from me, it kind of like made me sit down and realize like, I need to be doing stuff for me. I need to be protecting my peace and like I need to be doing like what makes me happy and not what like I shouldn't be so focused on others perspective of me and I should be like more focused on like myself. He went from being an athlete to then an entrepreneur. So what was the support like from the friend group? I when I heard, when he told me about it, I was just like if it's gonna be anyone, it's Jim. If anyone's gonna be successful at it, it's gonna be Jim. Using not only your voice, but your entire platform, devoting all your time to a message like that when men suffer so much and didn't talk about it for so long, why? For the first like week, people were like, oh, I'm so sorry, like, let me know if you need anything. But like, at some point it like stops, you know, and, like I was still hurting. And so like, I don't want others to feel the way that like I did. And so like, I know people are still going to, but like, I want them like give them like a platform to where they can get help if they want to. Like I want them to know like they're not the only person going through it and like it will be okay. Cause like times got like really rough, you know. It was like hard. There's too many men going through things and they just feel like they can't speak up about it. Cause it's like uh, the stigma around like just be a man, just uh, work through it and it's just like nah like we gotta start talking about it. Jerem also mentioned that when you guys were in school everyone would kind of be you know wearing it around so how cool is that to see everyone in it the was, community supporting something so great? It was amazing I was just seeing it and like people like actually like not like trying to like tear it down it was just amazing just seeing people like being like okay yeah like I rock with this like, it felt good. I felt proud for him. I'm excited to like wake up, spread my message, work on clothing, and like all the support I've gotten has made it that much better, you know? Like I never would have like guessed it would have gone this well this fast, you know? In a couple of years you're not gonna remember winning. You're gonna remember how you feel. And so like that's just my biggest goal is to like spread that message of like you're not alone, like you can get help, like protect your peace, do what makes you happy, like you don't gotta put yourself through torture to make some coach happy to play five more minutes than what you would if you were to press your own piece and like be happy with your sport, you know? Well, it's been a few weeks since longtime Montana Western women's basketball coach Lindsey Woolley departed the program and headed for Utah State. It was an incredible opportunity for him, and back here at Western, it's created an equally big opportunity for his successor, who is someone who has plenty of experience with this program. I honestly was kind of in shock for the first 24 hours, now kind of setting in a little bit more. If that face looks familiar, it should. That's Harrison native and 2019 Western grad Britt Cooper, who was a critical component of the well-oiled bulldog machine that surged to its first national championship that season. After graduating, she was a grad assistant at Division II Angelo State in Texas and then returned to Harrison before returning to her alma mater and serving as an assistant coach under Woolley this past season. Cooper certainly knows this program and while the Bulldogs conducted a national search for Woolley's replacement, they determined that the best candidate was in-house. We have a really good culture here that Coach Willie built and I was able to be a part of that for a lot of years. I have national championship experience playing that 2019 team and I just have a really good connection with the girls that they respect me and it's they're easy to work with and work for me. And while she's thrilled that her predecessor is going to get an opportunity at the Division One level, there's certainly a touch of sadness that someone who's been a huge part of her life for so many years is moving on. I had to make some emotions about it. <laughs> he's a great guy. He's a great coach. I would have loved to 
kept working for him forever, but that's not how the basketball works either. But I'm really excited for him because it's a really good challenge for him and it's going to push him to a new level. Four years ago, Cooper was playing for this team. Today, she's in charge. A pretty remarkable rise and one she didn't see happening, at least not this soon. And when you took the job, were you envisioning that you were going to be promoted to head coach you know, one year later? No, I, my dream was to be the head coach at Western, but I did not expect that dream to come true within a year. This opportunity may have presented itself to Cooper earlier than anticipated, but either way, she's ready to make the absolute most of it. I'm really excited. Like I said, this is one of my dream jobs, and so to be able to do it here in my old stomping grounds is pretty awesome. Keep pushing and recruiting. You know, I have to reach out to all the 24s, kind of talk about the change in coaching staff, and hit the ground running. In Dillon, Luke Shelton, MTN Sports. Luke Grace, thank you very much for those reports. Always great to see. And you can catch the WNBA excuse me, action on Friday night tonight when the Los Angeles Sparks face the Chicago Sky. Tip-off is at 6 o'clock on ION. That's channel 7.4 in Bozeman and 5.4 over in Butte. All right, that'll do it for us here in the locker room. But when we come back, Matt has another look at that forecast. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Matt Elwell. Current time is 5.54. By the way, uh, you can catch that uh, Friday night spotlight, WNBA, tonight on ION. I rolled with it, right? Yeah, all right. Hey, uh, current time uh, coming up on 5.55. Pleasant conditions this morning, clear skies. A little crisp and cool in West Yellowstone because of the clear skies. 36 degrees our temperature right now, but most areas hovering near 50 to start the morning. And with full sunshine, we're going to see these temperatures ramp up very quickly uh, throughout the day. I think it's going to be a gentle run back up into the 80s as you head into the afternoon. Light wind, plenty of sun, a rain chance is pretty limited. Uh, I just don't see anything significant uh, on the horizon for today. Tomorrow may be a little shift. You look statewide, uh, a couple of areas still into the 60s. Glasgow sitting at 64 degrees to start the morning. Today's going to be clear pretty much throughout. We may see a few uh, afternoon clouds. No good rain chances today. Tomorrow afternoon, uh, we will see some spotty showers firing off, and these could produce some very heavy downpours at times through the afternoon and early part of the evening before fading. <coughs> Excuse me. We're not looking at a severe weather threat, but we are looking at uh, some heavy downpours tomorrow. Highs near 80 for today. Pleasant conditions. I call it outdoorable. Enjoy the afternoon today. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to continue that uh, meteoric rise in temperatures as we head into uh, the weekend. It looks like Saturday and Sunday basically holding into the mid 80s. Lots of sun. There are some uh, rain chances out there late on Saturday afternoon into uh, the early evening, but very pleasant conditions for the next couple of days. Oh, that'll be so nice. Great for entertaining, too. Yes. You know, a lot of people will be over at many people's house celebrating the holiday weekend, but I may be alone in saying this. Nobody likes somebody that maybe overstays their welcome. Okay. Stays a little too long. Well, this guest got the message loud and clear. Take a look at this. Oh, so yeah. So he's going to make a fast exit. <laughs> Just what did this little bear do and how did he get out of this tricky situation? We'll have that story when Montana This Morning continues. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The Supreme Court has limited affirmative action in college admissions. I'm Jared Hill with reaction to the major decision and why one conservative justice says race can still be a factor. And we've talked about it before, vinyl made a comeback, but what other iconic media mode might get the same treatment? The old cassette tape. We'll delve into that in a couple minutes. And our life experiences shape who we are, but we all know people can change. Up next, we follow one woman's journey as she traveled across America looking for answers and ask her what we can all learn about America. I'm Jonathan Ambarian at the state capitol, where advocates celebrated a new state law that they say will provide important additional support for Montana families in need of child care services. All right, top of the hour on the dot on this Friday, the last day of June. Matt, can you believe you can... it's already here? <laughs> I can't believe it. Tomorrow it'll be exactly halfway. July 1st, oh, January yeah, there you 1st. Go. Uh, you know it. what's interesting? Uh, this year's been so strange. Mm -hmm. At this point, 
I've turned on my sprinklers yeah. uh, in my yard. Right. But they're not running. Oh, because we've <laughs> because we've had enough rain. Uh, we haven't needed to worry about it. We're, yeah. we're conserving as much as we can. Fantastic. Uh, Mother's Nature is helping with that overall today. Not so much right mm. now. Looking at 40s and 50s. Rain chances are pretty slim, so we're going to jump straight to the day planner. It's a gorgeous morning out there. Wow. I think our temperatures are just ramping up nicely through the early afternoon. I expect our highs to be right near 80 degrees. No good rain chances today, but it is going to be a fabulous afternoon. I'm going to break down what you can expect as you go into the weekend. There are rain chances in the weekend. We'll break it all down for you in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Right off the top, three more crashed railroad tank cars were removed from the Yellowstone River near Reed Point yesterday. Crews at the scene say five cars remain in the river. Two are filled with asphalt, two others are filled with molten sulfur, and one car carried scrap metal. Water testing continues upstream and downstream of the crash. Crews report there is no detectable levels of hydrocarbons in the water downstream of the crash. <coughs> sulfur levels are the same upstream and downstream of the site. No known risks to drinking water are reported. The cause of the derailment and bridge collapse remains under investigation. We'll, of course, keep you updated online and on air as we learn more. And with the freight train derailment in Stillwater County this weekend, some in the state are now questioning whether Montana should pursue more rail train service. MTN's Charlie Klepp takes a closer look. Passenger rail has been a hot topic in southern Montana, with many counties pushing for restoration of the service in this part of the state. Now, Yellowstone County has been the exception, and following last week's derailment, that opposition has grown even stronger. It's been 43 years since passenger rail ran through southern Montana. This now collapsed bridge in Yellowstone was a vital part of that route. While the bridge will be rebuilt, a triumphant return for Amtrak service seems less likely. Spending billions to make millions doesn't seem like a good investment. Yellowstone County Commissioner John Oslin's opposition of passenger rail service dates back long before the derailment. In 1890, it was the best way to cross the country. In 2023, it's the slowest way to cross the country. That lack of efficiency and the cost of creating passenger rail infrastructure in the state are his biggest concerns, but the recent derailment only solidifies his beliefs. And that's kind of a wake-up call for everybody, but uh, I think the infrastructure is vulnerable all across the United States. But support for a southern passenger rail line is still moving full steam ahead. Well, here in Montana, we need look no farther than the High Line, northern Montana, to see the benefits of passenger rail. Dave Strohmeyer is the chairman of the Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. He believes passenger rail will be an economic boost for the state, and is just one more reason upgrades to the tracks are needed. Uh, whether it's freight operations or passenger rail operations, we want to see the investments made to ensure that we have safe operations out there. We are investing in our highways, our streets, because we think that's important. So let's not kid ourselves uh, to hold passenger rail to a different standard. Austin agrees our rail infrastructure needs improvements, but for freight traffic. Passenger rail, he believes, should not be a part of the discussion. Rail much different than highway where you have a lot of opportunities to reroute it. If you have a bridge failure in the railroad, then you have to go down through Wyoming or up past the High Line. And if those routes aren't critically ready for passenger rail at a, at a huge expense, you've got another problem to deal with. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Now switching gears over to the national scene. This morning, we're looking deeper into the Supreme Court's ruling, ending the way colleges and universities factor in an applicant's race when it comes to admissions. The vote was 6-3 to three in the case involving the University of North Carolina and 6-2 to two in the Harvard case. CBS News' Jared Hill has the latest. We won't go back! We won't go back! Dueling protests outside the Supreme Court Thursday. The court, powered by its conservative majority, ended the use of race-based affirmative action in college admissions. It means that you cannot explicitly use race as a factor in admissions. Writing for the majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said admissions policies at Harvard University and the University of North Carolina violated the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, saying in part, the student must be treated based on his or her experiences as an individual, not on the basis of race. In a scathing dissent, liberal justice Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman on the court, wrote with let them eat cake obliviousness, 
the majority pulls the ripcord and announces colorblindness for all by legal fiat. The cases were brought by conservative activist Edward Bloom's Students for Fair Admissions, arguing the schools discriminated against white and Asian applicants like Calvin Yang. It is my hope to see a renewed college admission system that recognizes and rewards the multifaceted talents and diverse perspective that each individual can bring to the table. Chief Justice Roberts wrote that universities can still consider the discussion of how race affected an applicant's life, say, in an essay, a notion, though, that Justice Sotomayor called nothing but an attempt to put lipstick on a pig. President Biden slammed the ruling. This is not a normal order. While Republicans praised the decision as ending discrimination. Jared Hill, CBS News. President Biden says he's directed the Department of Education to develop guidelines for how schools can consider race while working within the law. The justices noted this ruling does not impact race-based affirmative action in U.S. military academies. Now focusing back here in the Treasure State, a bill aimed at reducing the cost of child care in Montana goes into effect tomorrow, July 1st, after passing the 2023 Montana Legislature. MTN's Jonathan Ambirian attended a press conference with supporters of the bill and has more on its projected impact. The Best Beginning Scholarship Program has been in existence for years, but supporters of House Bill 648 say it makes a number of key changes that will make a big difference for the families using the program. It makes me think about um, how symbolic it is to, to be in community around this because um, nothing about this bill happened in a silo, nothing about this bill was an individual effort. Montana legislative Democrats held a news conference at the state capitol Thursday to mark the new law coming into effect. Best Beginnings covers some of the costs of childcare for lower income families. They have to make a co-payment based on their income levels. Valerie Knowlton and her family joined the program in 2021, but withdrew after their co-pays grew to more than they could handle. Our co-payment went up um, to, you know, our, about as much as our rent payment, and we just couldn't do it. HB 648, sponsored by Democratic Representative Alice Buckley of Bozeman, caps co-pays at 9% of a family's monthly income. It expands eligibility to those making 185% of the federal poverty level, about $55,000 a year for a family of four. And it makes payments to providers more stable by basing them on a child's enrollment instead of attendance. Jen Gursky is the executive director of YWCA Helena, which operates its own child care program, Caterpillar's Clubhouse, for children that have experienced trauma. She says they've seen clients have to cut back hours at work because of the cost of co-pays. I know that we can do better and this bill does better for the folks in our communities. It does better for the folks that are struggling with challenges that some of us will never know, but it also does better for the folks just exactly as the representative said, wanting to be in the workforce. Knowlton says it's a great feeling to have leaders take action to help families like hers. I feel like we're being seen, you know, it's an issue that's been, it's a crisis that's been happening. Um, it's on, an ongoing problem that, you know, this, this will definitely help. The provisions of House Bill 648 will officially take effect on Saturday, July 1st. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Now, when it comes to two Americas, how far are you willing to go to explore the other side of America you may not know or understand? Last year, we tagged along with a woman traveling cross country on a mission to talk to anyone and everyone about their views. Correspondent Matt Pearl recently paid Emma Taylor a visit for perspective on her listening tour and how it changed her life. What's the best, like the guava or? The natural place to meet Emma Taylor I know. is behind is her counter. The kids get really hyped up after eating ice cream. She runs an ice cream shop. She's usually busy. So I'm asking everyone today, is this pre-dinner or post-dinner? And she's always up to chat. Post-dinner. But that's not where I met Taylor. How are you? I am fantastic. At least not where I first met her. <laughs> she lives in New Jersey. I live near Atlanta. A year ago, we sat near each other at a family-style breakfast spot in Nashville. That's when she told me about her mission then. And so this is the shop that has us on this day meeting again. The trip shook me loose. It really made me realize I might need to change myself. Taylor's trip took her to Nashville and across America, 
by herself on her motorcycle. And Amarillo. She aimed to experience the country and not just its scenery. Last half of the ride. But its potential for conversation. I really feel strongly that I want to meet other people and know what they're thinking and find um, something other than division. Absolutely. Headlines and studies show up seemingly daily about a divided America. A Pew study found 42% of Americans believe there are strong conflicts between people in urban areas and those in rural ones. 49% see conflict among those who practice different religions. 71% see it among those with different racial or ethnic backgrounds. And 90% see it between political parties. Last year, Taylor says she broke through that division. She conversed at bar stools and countertops with people who sometimes shared her worldview, other times not. Almost always, she found a path to connection. A year later, I'm sad that it feels like we're more divided. Protecting that path has meant proactive effort. This would be a bubble. Yeah, this is a bubble. Taylor lives in a city where in 2020, four of five voters chose Joe Biden. She's within view of New York City, where three of four voted for Biden. Surrounded by millions, she is still bubbled. When you read the news, it's really discouraging. But when I have in-person conversations, it feels like it's more possible. Um, we have strawberry smoothie. And that's Absolute where this story coconut. turns. A rising number of studies suggest we perceive polarization as worse than it is. Oh, excellent choice. Taylor learned this lesson on her trip. The hard part has been keeping that lesson alive now back in her bubble, but she's doing it. I can have a conversation with you and be diametrically opposed to what you believe in. I don't see why not. Create community, spread kindness, whatever you want to call it. I want to fight the bubble. <laughs> in Jersey City, New Jersey, I'm Matt Pearl. Now we often see trends come in and out of style, whether it be fashion, home decor, or even the ways we listen to music. Now we've done stories in the past on how vinyl is making a comeback into style, but Kristen Krauss takes us inside the world of cassette tapes. If you're feeling nostalgic and missing the era of boom boxes and Walkmans, then your ears are in for a musical treat. Cassette tapes are making a comeback. More people have been buying them over the past few years. In the U.S., sales reached a two-decade high in 2022, with more than 440,000 tapes sold. The rise in popularity is partially due to the unique sound the tapes produce. The tape that we have now is not the same tape that was used in the 70s and 80s. When we went into manufacturing tape six years ago, uh, we took an oxide that had been used on reel-to-reel -reel studio mastering tape in the past, and we learned how to miniaturize that and to coat it thinner onto cassette tape. So the frequency response, uh, the uh, sound quality is much, much better on current tapes than it was those from the 70s and 80s and 90s. During the heart of the pandemic, independent artists turned to cassettes as a cheaper way to make money. Now superstars like Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, and Harry Styles are releasing tapes. Some fans buy them as keepsakes rather than to listen to them, especially since quality tape players can be hard to come by. There are some boom boxes out there. We have some companies like Tascam TAC and Marantz building a good you know, rack mount decks again. And there are a lot of little Walkman style players coming out. Some are very good and some aren't very good. And I think that's gonna be the challenge in the future, just like it was a challenge to find turntables when vinyl made its comeback. Cassette tapes can cost anywhere between four and $30, and you can buy them at several major retailers, including Walmart and Amazon. I think that's so neat. Hey, I remember buying um, Michael Jackson's uh, Thriller album back Oh, you're kidding, back, on cassette? Back in the day, yeah. I didn't really use cassettes much for music, but as we were just talking about, I used it for audiobooks um, when I was a kid. Yeah. I would fall asleep to, to different chapters the, of books. The question is, will they bring back eight track? Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm hoping not. That's really. the next thing. Yep. Tune in next week. Maybe we'll have some news on that. Right. Well, I have a really fun piece of video. When I saw it, I was shocked. I, I was just speechless. Take a look at this video, Matt. So this is a bear. Overstate is welcome. Well, in all fact, he just got into the house, right. went around upstairs, and he was stuck. Oh, he got was, stuck uh, sitting outside. Now, well, I think that I heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's over in Denver. Yeah. Well, he got stuck on the second story. He didn't know how to get back down the stairs. Right. He didn't want to take the stairs. He thought, okay, maybe the window is the next. Solution next is option. what? 
Well, he went back inside. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> he went back inside. He had to rethink his game plan a little bit. The bear is completely fine. He went back down the stairs and escaped on the main level. And he picked the porridge <laughs> that was just right. Of course. Yep, he broke that screen and he made a dash for All right. it. All right. Really fun stuff. All right, quick break here on Montana this morning. But when we come back, you may have heard of the term love language when talking about your loved ones. But did you know that your four-legged family member may have a love language all their own. After we take a break, we'll have today's top stories, a look at your weather, plus ways to learn how to connect with your pets. This storm tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Matt Elwell. Beautiful morning. Uh, clear skies is looking to Butte uh, right now and watching the sun head over the horizon in Belgrade. Uh, very comfortable conditions. Oh, there goes a uh, plane, 619, watching it uh, take off on the runway. Uh, again, the temperature is very mild into the morning. A light breeze setting up as we're starting the morning as well. But uh, that's all we're going to deal with is a light breeze for the day today. 40s and 50s across most of the area. 36 in West Yellowstone, one of our cooler temperatures. You look at the hour by hour temperature, I expect daytime highs to be near 80 degrees today. Rain chances very limited through the afternoon and you look at what's going on. This high pressure is really controlling uh, most of western Montana for the day today. We do hold the potential some rain showers you go into Saturday. So I want to put that out there now. There may be a few isolated thunder showers uh, scattered across the area, but today clear skies pretty much all the way across the board uh, through Friday afternoon and evening. And then as you go into your Saturday, the morning's clear, but once you get into the early afternoon, these spotty downpours uh, start to move their way through the area and they could be fairly heavy with uh, some of the rain showers that are rolling through. Look at southern parts of Gallatin County, uh, 6, 630 uh, back into southern Madison County. There could be some very uh, heavy rain showers. We're not talking severe weather necessarily, but there could be some localized flooding along with that. Highs today into the 70s and 80s, sensational sunshine warming quickly. This is what I refer to as an outdoorable day. Get outside and enjoy it. It's a fabulous afternoon uh, setting up for today. Average high around 79. We should be above that today and through the weekend. Monday, late in the afternoon, that's how it's slated now, uh, into the evening we have a cold front moving in. It's uh, going to drop our temperatures, but it could bring some morning rain showers uh, for the 4th of July that we'll need to watch the afternoon, at least as it stands right now looks relatively dry. I'm going to talk more about that hour by hour forecast in just a couple of minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Your first look at top stories this morning. In a landmark case, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that Harvard University and the University of North Carolina violated the Constitution by considering race when deciding whether to admit someone to the schools. The ruling overturns nearly 50 years of precedent and means higher education institutions will need to come up with new ways to create diverse student bodies. CBS News polling shows that 70% of Americans think race should not be allowed as a factor in college admissions. And a Florida jury found a former sheriff's deputy not guilty for failing to act during the mass shooting that killed 17 people at Parkland High School in 2018. 
Prosecutors alleged former deputy Scott Peterson's inaction contributed to some of the deaths and injuries. Peterson broke down in tears after he was acquitted of felony child neglect, culpable negligence, and perjury. And yesterday, Washington, D.C. had some of the most polluted air in the world. Nearly a third of the U.S. population has been feeling at least some impact as smoke from Canadian wildfires continues to drip, drift south across the border. In Chicago, city officials urged people to limit driving and opened some air-conditioned shelters. And everyone is always talking about what their love language is versus their partners. But have you ever stopped to consider what your pet's love language might be? Well, Teresa Strasser is helping us learn how to speak our pet's love language. Everyone has a love language they prefer. A love language is the way that you like to be loved. It could be physical touch, it could be a gifts you like to receive, it could be the way people talk to you. It's just a good feeling you get when you know somebody loves you. But do you know what your four-legged friend's love language is? Perhaps it could be uh, toys you're buying for them or being not played with or food you're buying for them is not being eaten or scratches you're trying to give them they're not too interested in. To help you learn how to better connect with your pet through their love language, we spoke with CEO and owner of Dr. Kelly's surgical unit, Douglas Patrick Quinn. Starting with physical touch. It consists of belly scratches, ear squishes, petting just in general, all kinds of just busy touching your animal. And you may think all pets love belly rubs, but how do you know for sure? Cats will arch their back up. It's a pretty common thing to do. Or the dog will actually come seek it out and often put their face in your hand or uh, jump right up on your lap and, and roll over looking for that belly rub. Next, acts of service. The things you do with them, throwing of the ball, taking them for walks. They're interested in engaging what you're doing. They want the physical attention that you're giving them beyond just touching them, but more like playing with them and being involved in what they're up to. And to be sure this is their love language, watch for their reactions. Some pets, some dogs particularly, will go get the leash when they know it's time. They'll bring it over to you. They're standing by the door. You can tell that that's what they're interested in. Dogs that are really interested in ball behavior would go get the ball, bring it to you, or bring you the toy that they're most interested in playing with. Your pet's love language might also be gifts. Essentially, items that you might share or bring for your pet to play with. The, the Chewy box that arrived, you go to the local retail store and you buy little trinkets that squish or bounce. Gifts can also be given in the form of treats. Little treats that reward your pet for doing good behavior to get them to perform a certain act for you or as uh, just a gentle reminder of how much you love them is wonderful. And lastly, words of affirmation. That would be, in our eyes, when speaking to a pet, the kind languages. It might be the little boo-boo-boos or the little, the, the little high-pitched noises. And to tell words of affirmation, is their preferred language? Dogs tend to be a little bit more emotional. You can tell that they come over, their tails are wagging. The way they produce their reactions is significantly more visual. Cats are the same way. When they get up close to you and you're saying those words of affirmation, they might purr, they might create a, a more touching reaction that lets you know that it's something they enjoy. We are learning your pets love language. Home Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Matt Elwell. The current time is 627. Uh, looking out uh, at Yellowstone National Park, the lines are uh, going to be long here in about a half an hour on through the rest of the day, I'm sure. Temperatures a little crisp and cool to start the morning. We're sitting at 36 degrees in West Yellowstone. Everybody else uh, holding into the 40s or low 50s so far. Clear skies, quiet conditions, light wind, uh, perfect conditions for the day today. If you want to spend some time outdoors, a little extra sunscreen, daytime highs ramping up very quickly. We should top out right into the low 80s in Bozeman, upper 70s in Butte. I think today stays dry. Uh, tomorrow, however, there are some showers and thunderstorms. It won't dampen the whole day, uh, but the possibility of some pop-up showers late in the afternoon tomorrow, a distinct possibility. Uh, clear skies for the afternoon, pretty clear for the evening as well. Start out Saturday, absolutely gorgeous. Get all your activities in. Um, 
earlier in the day. There's the spotty showers and thunderstorms. Uh, it won't cover the entire area, but you may have some very heavy downpours at times as you get into the late afternoon and evening. Uh, today, comfortable upper 70s, low 80s. It is going to warm quickly. Uh, again, very little cloud cover. Uh, it's what I refer to as an outdoorable day. It's perfect afternoon uh, for us as uh, we're setting things up. Daytime highs in Bozeman, Butte, and Dillon all near 80 degrees. Even West Yellowstone uh, pretty close to that with a high of around 75. Stay with us. More Montana this morning coming up as we kick off the 630 half hour. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Haven has opened up a new shelter in Bozeman. I'm Kristen Merkel and I'll tell you what this nonprofit is doing to provide better resources for domestic violence survivors. And at least 14 people have died in the South amid ongoing blistering heat waves. We break down the latest in this extreme heat wave in the South as other parts of the country continue to live under air quality warnings. So we've turned in from a local rodeo to we're destination rodeo. I mean, we bring in around $3 million to the community. Folks are gearing up and getting ready for the Livingston Roundup. I'm Joe Lee Sleen. I'll tell you how vendors are preparing for this busy weekend, and I'll tell you what kind of revenue is made off this event. Alrighty, 632 on this Friday edition of Montana This Morning. Jay McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. Hard to believe end of June we're here. I uh, know, uh, and talking about rodeos, it's mm -hmm. kind of cowboy Christmas here in <laughs> Montana and Wyoming over the next few weeks. It absolutely is. It'll be a fun time. Uh, it will. Uh, lots of rodeo action. I can't wait to see Julie's uh, I know. package. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, temperatures today, uh, we're comfortable into the morning, 40s and 50s. Nothing to show on... Hi. Hi, Hi Jane. Hello. Nice you. Uh, <laughs> Weather looks great. It does, doesn't <laughs> it? Uh, temperatures are going to warm up. I think that we are looking at a dry, sunny afternoon. What I refer to as an outdoorable day. Enjoy it <laughs> while it's here. Uh, we do have some rain chances in the forecast, plus a look at your f July 4th forecast. I'm going to break that all down for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. 633 right off the top. New today, a Wyoming man admits to traveling to Bozeman with intent to engage in sex with a minor. Following up on a story we first reported in February of this year, 38-year-old Jeremy Lusk of Crawley, Wyoming, pleaded guilty to travel with intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. Conduct, According to charging documents, Lusk sent explicit photos of himself and it was clear he knew he was talking to a 14-year-old girl and wanted a sexual encounter. Lusk faces a maximum of 30 years imprisonment, a $250,000 fine, and a minimum of a five years to life of supervised release. Sentencing is set for October 30th. We'll keep you up to date online and on air as that unfolds. But our top story this half hour, a new shelter is now open in Bozeman for the nonprofit Haven. It'll help to better support domestic violence survivors. MTN's Kristen Merkel reports on what exactly that means. I'm here in front of Haven's new shelter that is providing more resources than ever before to survivors of domestic violence in Gallatin County. Hi, I'm Kristen Merkel and I'm with KBZK. I have an appointment. Thank you. I see you on our pre-approved list and I'll let you in. We're so excited to be in the Barnard Center. It's our new shelter and community resource center. Haven is a nonprofit serving survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, sex trafficking, and stalking in Gallatin County. Haven's executive director, Erica Coyle, says this new shelter is because of community support. This has been an absolute labor of love. We had over 400 community members contribute to the project and really make it come to life and make it happen. 